This is where um, the medic will usually spend time in the back with their patients. Um, this is what I spend a lot of my transports looking at right here. I'm a paramedic uh, with Arizona Ambulance. I've been a paramedic since 2003. I'm currently working in Sierra Vista, which is in Southern Arizona. I am the uh, uh, chief and uh, manager for Arizona Ambulance. I came from Seattle where I worked for you know, 23 years in EMS there. And, you know, we had gone through WTO riots and, you know, the Rodney King riots and so many other things. And uh, this whole COVID-19 thing, this is one of the, one of the scariest things that I had been through. A lot of things that, that uh, we have in EMS, we can, we can deal with through situational awareness and we're trained for it. And this is, a, this is new. We have about a six minute response. So once we get into the ambulance, it takes us about six minutes to drive over to Canyon Vista Medical Center. They're a smaller hospital, um, so they don't have pulmonology most of the time. They don't have gastroenterology. They don't have, you know, they have an ICU, but it's limited to how much capabilities it has as well. We ended up having to drive them up to Tucson over to St. Joe's Hospital, which is much larger, much more capable. Whenever we transport patients into Tucson to the large hospitals, just from Sierra Vista, it's an hour and a half away. I'm prepared, but I have a little anxiety, I'll be honest. Um, if we do get calls, we're going to be in close contact with these patients for extended periods of time. So we quickly had to scramble. I went and I got Dan. I told him that we got a call and we had to quickly go to the back to put a barrier in between the front and back of the ambulance. As you can see, um, we need to put a big old barrier device in between there um, because we don't want any of those COVID particles getting into the cab as we're driving for long periods of time. We couldn't rule out COVID. Um, so we had to treat it like it is until proven otherwise. We got him onto the gurney and stuff, and he seemed like he was all right. He was a little dizzy and stuff, so we had to help him onto the gurney. And we got him into the truck, and uh, this was actually, believe it or not, this is the first time that I had to wear my gas mask. I think my patient was a little amused by it. Um, because he said, so, uh, you guys scared? <laughs> he asked that to me and my partner and we just, we can't like, we're not really supposed to let any of them feel like we are insecure. Like we're supposed to be the strong ones all the time. Um, so we're like, no, no, man, piece of cake, you know, but honestly, I was a little nervous. Yeah. Everything that I need is in there. It's, that's my bag. It's my go bag. My organization is also on the FEMA team, uh, the, the uh, disaster response team. And so I've uh, committed uh, an ambulance to, you know, go to New York if, if need be. You know, we're on the list in case we get deployed. We haven't been deployed yet. I want to be here for my local community, but at the same time, my community is nationwide not just nationwide, even global. I mean, even if they wanted me to go out of the country, I'd be willing to do that if, if need be. I try not to show um, how scared I am to my family. I'm on a 36 hour shift right now, and I haven't been home since the other morning. It's not, it's not fun um, to be away from home for this long. Um, and being on DRT, they put me on standby, and I have the potential to go out for 21 days straight. Every moment is, it's pretty important when I'm at home, you know? It's like, this could be the last time I could see you for a long time. So, I'm trying to cherish those moments. The selflessness that um, our guys have, um, 
you know, you don't make a lot of money in this industry. Uh, you're, you're in it uh, for for people. You're in it for, um, I know it sounds really corny, but you're in it for humanity. Um, and it's times like this that uh, I'm super proud of my guys because they have families at home. They have little kids at home and have the same fears that, that I do and still show up to work. I want to help people. That's why I that's why I continue to do this. I know that people are out there, they're suffering and they need help. Um, it's not that they want me to show up, but they need me to show up. <laughs>